Many of the side quests, encounters, and even items you can find in Ghostwire Tokyo were inspired by real-life urban legends and pop culture. So this week, we're going to take a look at some of the real urban legends and even a few movies that inspired several of the side quests in the game. First, the Bloodthirsty Blossoms side quest. A gardener spirit will inform you that one of his beloved cherry blossoms has red blooms. But not only are the blooms out of season, this has stopped all the other cherry blossoms nearby from blooming as well. Akito remarks that there must be a corpse buried beneath it that's corrupting the tree and the others won't bloom until you cleanse it. This is actually an incredibly common myth that's believed to stem from a book released in 1928 called Beneath the Cherry Trees. This book opens with the line, there is a dead body buried beneath the cherry tree. You can easily find translations of this in English if you look around, but this idea was further perpetuated in later years by Yanagita Kunio, the man who many consider to be the father of modern Japanese folklore studies. As such, an urban legend was born that if you see a cherry blossom with particularly vivid colours, then this may be because it's feeding on the blood of a corpse buried beneath it. A rather obscure legend that non-Japanese speakers may have missed can be found in the Dire Straits mission. This mission is rather quick, and doesn't seem to have much point to it, other than perhaps a quick laugh. But for people familiar with the legend, well, it probably had them on edge to say the least. You'll find a spirit called Man Who Needs To Use Restroom, just north of the musical Nekomata. This man complains that the restroom in the park is always occupied, and he really needs to use it. Guess spirits have to go as well. But there's only a single stall, and someone in there is making some terrible noises. Knock on the door, and man who needs paper will scream in Japanese, KAMIKURE! The English translate this as paper, need paper. After remarking that this would certainly leave you with some regrets, Akito hands over some paper as requested, but then the spirit requests another roll. Hand that over and the spirit moans again before remarking, ah, oh, that's blood. Seems he wiped a little too much. But for this poor man who died in the middle of doing his business, he can now finally move on and the haunting is exercised. While this is a rather amusing side mission, the urban legend it comes from isn't so much. The legend, known as Kamiokure, is a play on the word Kami. Kami has numerous meanings in Japanese, but the two that are the focus here are paper and hair. In this legend, a student goes to the toilet and, while she is there, hears a voice calling out, Kamiokure! hand me some kami. Naturally, the girl assumes the voice is asking for some paper, and so she tosses a roll over the top of the stall. But then the voice calls out yet again, just like in Ghostwire. Kami okure! Hand me some kami. The girl tosses another roll over, but apparently it's still not enough, and once more the voice calls out. I don't have any more, the girl says, and that seems to be the end of that. But as she's about to leave, she knocks on the door to check if the person is okay. There's no response, so she pushes the door and it opens. Nobody is there. But then she suddenly hears a voice. Not that Kami, this Kami! A hand reaches out of the toilet and grabs her hair, the Kami it was referring to. So, probably lucky for Akito that he apparently had enough toilet paper on hand. The Strung with a Curse quest has all sorts of neat things hiding in it, but this week we're going to look at two things in particular. First, and something most people likely noticed when they went inside, is that the layout of the piano school matches, almost room for room, the layout of the cursed house from Juon. A neat little easter egg. But the part I'd like to focus on today isn't the house's layout, but rather the portraits of the musicians in the living room. 
One in particular changes as the mission goes on, giving you a nice little smile and wink at one point, and later jumping out for an incredibly well-timed jump scare. This is based on one of the most infamous seven school mysteries that are told in schools all over Japan, the haunting in the music room. This haunting often involves two parts, both of which are present in this mission. First, the mysterious piano music that plays despite the fact that nobody is playing the piano. And second, the portrait of a musician, generally Beethoven, that moves when nobody is supposed to be around. There are no actual schools in Ghostwire, so this piano school is about as close as it gets, and a fitting place for this urban legend to appear. The Art Imitates Life mission sees us chasing around a dragon that has escaped from a temple. Not a real dragon, of course. This one was painted on the sliding doors, and now it has slipped out through the dragon veins of energy in the city, and we have to hunt it down. This fascinating and honestly gorgeous mission is actually based on a four-character compound word in Japanese, Garyu Tensei, meaning the final touches of something, which itself comes from an old Chinese tale that goes as follows. There was a famous painter by the name of Zhang Sengyo, and he painted four dragons on the walls of Anli Temple in Jinling. However, Zhang ensured not to paint the eyes on these dragons, for if he did, he feared they would come to life and escape. However, someone, thinking the paintings were incomplete, then painted the eyes on two of the dragons, and, as Chang feared, they escaped, flying off to the heavens with thunder crashing around them. The other two dragons remained as pictures, missing their eyes. In Ghostwire, the dragon escapes because it's said that it was painted using the blood of the fallen, and after that, the dragon brought great misfortune upon the land. The grudges of those who died lingered in the dragon, bringing it to life. When it's time to finally trap the dragon, it rumbles and thunders, just like in the legend. Finally, the Haunting Visions mission seems to have taken inspiration from potentially two sources. First and perhaps most obvious is The Eye, a Hong Kong Singaporean movie that came out in 2002 also known in some regions as Seeing Ghosts. The plot of this movie plays out rather closely to this side quest, with a woman receiving a cornea transplant that allows her to see again. However, soon after the transplant, she notices some shadowy figures and it turns out that she can now see ghosts. The same happens to the little girl in this mission, and after getting a cornea transplant, she now sees a monster whenever she closes her eyes. Another potential inspiration is A Change of Heart, a memoir by Claire Sylvia that has somewhat decent popularity in Japan. The book details how Claire underwent a heart and lung transplant and, after the operation, noticed that she now, for example, liked foods she never liked before, and it turned out they were some of the favourites of her organ donor. This thus presented the question of whether organs can carry a little part of a person's personality or even their soul once they are transplanted. Of course, these aren't the only missions that have taken inspiration from real-life urban legends or stories. We have the Deadly Shadow mission that looks at the legend of impending death if you see your own doppelganger, and the Dreaming Jewel mission that appears to have been inspired by the Hope Diamond cursed myth. There are also missions that involve the Hour of the Ox ritual, and of course, perhaps the most infamous of all, Kisaragi Station. But these are some of the main ones more directly related to Japan. What did you guys think? What other mission inspirations did you spot while playing? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.